If, if you have DNA fragility, that is, your DNA is very fragile, or you're born with an inability to repair your DNA, we have certain enzymes that help fix DNA if it's damaged. Some people don't have the enzymes uh, in sufficient quantity to fix that DNA. That's what happens to women with breast cancer, the BRCA1 and the BRCA2 uh, uh, defect. That's a DNA repair molecule. So if they're born with mutated genes, they can't fix their DNA. Now, if you expose that one to just small amounts of aspartame or small amounts of another carcinogen, she's more likely to get it even if she follows otherwise a healthy lifestyle. Now, the healthy lifestyle helps reduce her risk considerably, which is it's sort of like having uh, a sink that's overflowing, and instead of shutting off the water, you just keep calling for more mops. You've got to turn the water on. Yeah. Well, as I tell people, the most important thing is your diet. Yeah. And this is what's usually forgotten. People think, well, I'll take this supplement, or I heard on the news about this supplement that protects your brain, and if I take that, then I can just eat and do what I want to. Well, you can't. Right. As I gave you the analogy with the sink overflowing, you don't just keep calling for more mops. you got to turn the water off. Uh, well, what we need to do with our diet, we need to get the sugars as low as possible, you know, most of the sugars out of your diet. Eat complex carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. Eat whole grains, when you're going to eat some grain, but not a lot of those, but, you know, a moderate amount. Need to watch the red meats because red meats are very high uh, in iron. And it's highly absorbable iron. Iron dramatically increases pre radical generation, not only in the brain, but the entire body. It's associated with cancer and neurodegenerative diseases particularly things like Parkinson's disease. There's a high concentration of reactive iron in that part of the brain. So we need to watch our red meat intake. You need to always eat at least five to 10 servings of fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. because that helps bind the iron so you don't absorb it. Uh, and that keeps your iron from being uh, at too high a level. And that's why you eat mixed meals. The types of vegetables matter. They need to be organic. They need to, need to be high nutrient dense vegetables. There's something that's inflamed the nerves themselves. That's what the we key, discovered a long time ago is if you uh, surgically uh, operate on a patient while they're awake under local anesthesia, you take a nerve and you squeeze it, it doesn't hurt. Yeah. It right. just makes it tingle. But if you inflame the nerve and squeeze it, it's extremely... So she's inflamed. Yeah, I get it. Now that could connect her uh, fungus infection uh -huh. uh, to this. So if she's got a, a systemic fungus infection that is producing inflammation throughout her body uh, and the nerves are inflamed as a consequence, then that slight pressure, particularly when she's standing, because when you stand, it tends to close off that spinal canal. Uh, that'd be enough to produce pain. Now, in all neuropathies, all nerve-type pains, what they've discovered is connected to the inflammation. You clear up the inflammation, the pain gets better. So things like curcumin, quercetin, elagic acid, mm -hmm. resveratrol, that reduce inflammation, DHA, uh -huh. uh, tend to improve and heal these nerves. Now, you also need to give the nerves all the nutrients they need, right. like the B vitamins. Uh, acetyl carnitine uh, helps improve nerves. Uh, alpha lipoic acid. Uh, all of these things will help the, the nerves heal and be less painful. Well, the one I've been most impressed with is berberine. Oh. Uh, berberine is a very powerful antiviral, anti cancer. Uh, anti-inflammatory, it kills fungi, it kills uh, num uh, numerous viruses. It's safe to take. You, you can, ta you can take uh, two uh, capsules of the berberine, uh, which is uh, about 500 milligrams to a gram three times a day. Even if you take it with your medication, so you're on an antifungal, you can take it with the antifungal, it makes it even more effective. You, you get uh, a lot more clearing of this organism. And they get the anti-inflammatory effect at the same time. Any person who has a chronic infection, chronic inflammation is extremely yeah. low in magnesium. Well, a 
lot of things that cause to be inflamed and some of them we don't really think about. For instance, aging. Uh, just the fact that you get older, you become more inflamed. Yeah. And this is why the uh, Alzheimer's rate jumps from about 15% at age 70 to uh, almost 50% after age 85. Yeah. Because the degree of inflammation jumps tremendously. Uh, exposure to pesticides and herbicides around the house. We find these inflame the brain. Right. Known, which is a very commonly used uh, insecticide, uh, produces inflammation part of the brain that causes Parkinson's disease. And now it's accepted that exposure to pesticides and herbicides is the leading cause of Parkinson's disease. Monosodium glutamate. In fact, exposure to MSG early in life can increase inflammation in the body that lasts decades. A lot of it has to do with your diet. Mm -hmm. And consuming a lot of red meats, getting that iron, that's inflaming you. That's producing free radicals. If you're eating a lot of omega-6 type fats, omega-6 fats are converted into inflammatory chemicals. On these diets, putting on a few supplements and in two weeks, they say, I can't believe, can't believe it. how good I feel.